Ministries every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is another episode, and today you will get some good information, some great nuggets, and some tools to strengthen your relationship. The Couples Corner with Team Bevins. Howdy, people. How y'all feeling, man? Welcome to the Couples Corner. I am Marcus. This is my beautiful wife, Cherie. And we are happy to be here with you all tonight in the Couples Corner. First, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is our first time getting with you in 2020, you know. So we're excited about that. And, uh, you know, we got a few few things we need to chat about before we jump right into um, tonight's topic. Just to kind of update some things. And, of course, you know, we're going to pray. Um, but just, you know, so everybody's all on the same page with us, you know. How we're going to do some things in 2020. So um, in 2020 with the Couples Corner, what we're going to be doing is each month we're going to, um, you know, share what our topics are um, for the month. And we're going to work that topic for the month. So whatever the theme is for that month, we're going to be able to expound on it. And that way we don't have to, uh, you know, kind of leave some things out and kind of deal with uh, the multiple perspectives that go with those topics so we're going to be doing that um, and that's you know very important so um, that's going to be one of the key things that's happening with us um, we have the conference coming up next weekend so my wife is going to give you a little um, a little bit you know on that and I'll share a little bit about it too but we're going to talk about that for a second as well so that those of you who have not registered yet you can get on board Cause that is going down next week. Happy New Year, everyone! So the conference is next week, the twenty fourth and twenty fifth. For those of you who have not registered, you still have some time to register. It's a hundred dollars per couple, um, and it's in Timonium at the Holiday Inn um, in Timonium. And the way you can register is you can register online at www.mkt.com backslash w dash marcus dash bevins um or you can of course go to teambevins.com to get more information um and we'll post this for those who are with us via social media it'll be posted in the uh facebook live and for those of you who are just with us with mix station then you can get that information we'll give it out again so that you can um, write it down and, and have all that good information too and if you want to uh, register or pay f- do, through cash app you, you can, can do cash that app. as well yes and that's dollar sign strictly victory s-t-r-i-c-k-l-y not c-t c-k-l-y victory and put your name um your your name your couple's name in the notes or the comment section so we don't just think you gave us a hundred dollars <laughs> um because we will put it to good use yes, so will. um but yes the conference january 24th and 25th please register it's not just for people that are going through it's for everyone come out we have a great time um we um will be friday evening and then saturday until about five yep. so um, this year we're not having an extra, um, normally Saturday night we have an extra, um, event or a fellowship with couples or something. We're not doing that this year, but, um, you may meet a couple there and want to go have dinner or something. So, right. Hey, um, just come out if you, and if you want hotel rooms, you can call the hotel on your own this year. We did not do, um, the hotel rooms included. So you can just call the hotel on your own once you register with us and book your room for friday to saturday yep and so that is going down you don't want to miss it um you don't want to hear about it you want to be involved so um it's definitely something that you don't want to miss and it's going we're gonna have a great time 
Um, if you've ever been, then you already know that uh, we're going to have a great time. And um, you, like I said, you don't want to miss it. This year, the theme is um, a firm foundation. And so we have a lot to uh, cover in that. And there's a lot that we're going to uh, need to do. So we want you all to be a part of it. And we definitely look forward to the fellowship because we always have a great time when we all get together. Um, so definitely invited to be a part of that. And we want you all to get in the mix because it's going down and we're going to have a ball. All right. Good stuff, man. Um, so also, um, before we uh, jump into prayer and jump into um, the topic again, you know, we said we'd be dealing with the uh, the themes and likewise, for those of you who have um, some topics that you want us to discuss, you can leave that in the comment section or you can um, inbox and we will um, definitely look at those comments to see what we can do and how we can make it happen. So we definitely want to be able to cover any areas that you guys are concerned about or things that we can help with. So that's definitely important to us. And we want to get that done for you all as well. All right. So go ahead. And, and please um, share, share our broadcast, please. Um, for those of you that are on social media um, and those of you that can go to mix, mix station live, you can get the app on your phone or, and then you can listen, you know, via radio or right. via internet radio. And then you, um, anything that we post for the conference, um, although it's next week, there's still time. Like I said, you can feel free to share our flyers um, mm -hmm. or tell who so you may not be able to come or may not want to come. And so you can feel free to tell another couple and it's for married and engaged couples. Right. Um, so, and it's no, you don't, if you're married 40 years, that's fine. If you're married 20 years, that's fine. If you're married five days, that's fine. Just come. Yep. All right. So we're going to pray and, uh, then we're going to get into our topic tonight. Um, and so you all share this um, with some people, invite them to the conversation so that we can get this party started. Tonight we're talking about uh, business and marriage. So we're going to get into that as soon as we get done praying. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to gather together uh, in the couple's corner. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you are giving us this year. We thank you for allowing us to make it to 2020. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us the insight, the understanding, and the tools that we need so that we can be successful in our relationships. We thank you, Father, that you continue to trust us, you continue to love us, and you continue to give us the things that we need so that we can prosper. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're talking about um, business and marriage tonight. Um, now, this is a touchy subject because uh we we kind of find out a lot of people uh, make a lot of mistakes in both areas in marriage and in business um and in some cases um the two kind of clash and can cause um issues and dissension in your relationship if you're not careful so uh, we need to we need to talk about a few things that are very important to having success in business and having success in marriage. And it's really based on the same principles because marriage and business um, kind of forced for the tools of success. They function off of um, the same principles. And so we need to kind of look at look at those things. And so let's let's kind of break down a couple of the things that make marriage work and make it successful as well as business. Um, and the first thing is the vision. You ha It has to start with the vision. And sometimes um, all we have is a vision and we don't have any of the other components. And then we're trying to figure out why things are not um, functioning the way that we really want them to or that things are not going as great as we think that they should. But the reality is that if we don't if we don't fine tune the vision that we have, then it's very easy for us to miss some things or to, to, to overlook some things that are necessary. So um, when we first start with the understanding of the vision, you know, we got to deal with what the Bible says, dealing with the vision. And the Bible tells us that you have to write the vision and make it plain. And so some of us have some great visions and we have, you know, some great things that we feel like, you know, we can do or that God has, has shown or given us. And all of that's great. The question is, when you're married, how how 
how on board is your mate? How into the loop are they? You know, what do they know about what's actually going on and how things are transpiring? Because sometimes that is our downfall that we have this great vision, but we did not include our mate. Yeah. And so this great vision without including them is really a recipe for disaster because we have to make sure that we're on one accord. So, you know, dealing with the vision, that's 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 what you see. You know, what I mean, the vision is the potential, but your relationship is your reality. So if you are going to forsake your reality to chase potential, then you're possibly putting your relationship in jeopardy. So and flip side, the same thing. If you have started, you know, building a business and, you know, you got it going and it's not fully functioning and fully active and fully developed, um, but yet you're ready to embark on getting into a relationship and really trying to build that relationship and making that relationship something that is going to be um, something that you're going to really make concrete, then you're also taking the chance of doing a disservice to that business because you have the same 24 hours in a day. And so the time that it takes to build success is not, you know, something that just happens in a couple of minutes. So it really takes some time to, you know, really build it. And you have to be dedicated to that. And, you know, it really starts with inclusion. You have to make sure that your mate is included in what the vision is, because if not, then we really are um, we really are kind of messing things up. I know for for me with business, that was one of the that was one of the um, areas that I failed in starting out with um, starting with Strictly Victory because um, that's not what I did. You know, Strictly Victory because it was in the beginning stages. It was only music, and this was before the graphics and all that stuff got involved in it too. And so we were just doing kind of well. It started out with just music, and then it went into entertainment, but. I did not include my wife in the process. And so all it was, all only thing that I brought to the table concerning business was some money that I could bring a couple dollars home as a result of having this business, but there was still no inclusion. She still had no say in what was going on or how, you know, things could be done or, or input on how things could be made better not because she didn't have input that she could give, but I never made her feel welcome to, to give it or to share it or to feel like she had that place to say, hey, what about this? Or you think about this or consider this. And so without without that inclusion, then, you know, it's very easy to have her left out on the sideline, just like twiddling her thumbs, waiting for me to come back home and say, I'm finished with business and now I'm home to be your husband. And that's not cool because that's not something that would make anyone feel good about what you're doing, especially if this is about us, you know, establishing and building a partnership. So that's very important for us if we're going to if we're going to be able to establish and build effectively business, you know, and build our marriage. So, you know, we have to we have to make sure that we're on point with that. Um now, you know, now my wife is also a business owner as well, too. And so we've gone down this road more than one time dealing with, you know, business. And so having two businesses that are functioning or really we've had more than two functioning at the same time, along with maintaining, you know, our regular um, income and in, in, in how to provide and maintain our home. So it's not easy to do. But if you don't do it the right way, it can bring strain that can really get to a place where it almost cripples your relationship if you don't do it the right way. So that's important for us to know and really understand, because if not, we won't do we won't do good by our relationship or by our business. So um, you left me at a bad spot. I had something I was going to say. And you kept Sorry. talking. <laughs> so, um, uh, oh, we want to hear from you um, tonight. Two people, two types of people, two types of couples I want to hear from. I want to hear from the couple, um, if you could. If For 2020, I'm going to ask that you call in. 
a little bit more than you did in 2019. Okay, everyone? All right, I heard y'all saying okay. <laughs> so um, the number is one 493 Six four nine nine. I will repeat that. It's one eight five five four nine three six four nine nine. I would like to hear from um couples that were married already and started their business. Mm -hmm. Um, what were your challenges and your successes? Um, and then those that may have met each other and you already had a business. Um and how did you grow your marriage or make your marriage or your relationship into your marriage successful? Also owning a business. Um, maybe you have employees, maybe you don't, but how is that? I would like for those. And I know some of these type of people, so I know you should be able to call in. It's one eight five five four nine three six four nine nine. Um, and also, if you have any questions or comments, please call in or please type on uh, Facebook. Even if you're on Facebook social media with us, you can um, give us your the answer to my questions on there, or you can um, call in. It doesn't matter. Um, but I think that the vision part is very important because I, I feel as in a in a relationship when you're in your marriage, everybody needs to know the vision of what whatever it is that you plan the vision for the marriage the vision for vision for the business the vision for the children the vision for the finances the vision is very important because if we don't know the vision then we can't carry it out right you know so a lot of us are like oh yeah i own this or i do that but does your spouse know what you plan to do in five years with your business good you know does your spouse know what you plan to do with the overhead or I mean with the not the overhead, but the profit profit. Thank you for that word. Cause I was about to say the extra. So <laughs> with the profit that you make, you know, and if you're just starting your businesses, you don't really see profit for a while, but for the profit that you make, does your spouse know that profit is not, we going to go get new outfits. Or profit, or is everything you make for your business, we're going to pay bills and we're going to put it back into the business. Right. Or is your business, because you still work a job, you know, because like us, you know, we still work and have businesses. We, we well, there was a small time where we just did our business. But if, if you just are an entrepreneur, business owner, and that's all you do, what is the vision? What is the vision? Does your spouse know? I really want y'all to think about this. Like, does my spouse know what I plan to do with this business in the next three years? Because number one, they need to be praying. They need to be able to see how they can assist you. And they need to know what, what you're going to be doing. Because if you're planning on buying a, let's say if you're looking for a building, let's say you're looking for a bigger building than what you have then they need to know when you're out driving around, you're not just out driving around, but you're looking for that building. You're trying right. to see, you know, and they need to be looking for you as well. So they need to know the vision. I feel that it's important that they know the vision of your business or, you know, the vision of whatever you are creating. So if your spouse is not aware of in five years or in, th in, in the next six months, I want this business to be this then you need to sit down and have that conversation. And I know, you know, as business owners or when things are your baby, you feel like I, they don't need to know, but they're a part of you. Right. So they need to know. And then if they're, they can help you in any way, no matter what it is, you know, they don't, don't have to be in the front, but maybe in the background behind the scenes, they're helping you. Then you need to let them know. Don't just spring on them. Oh, we're getting this building in a month because then they're trying to figure out, well, how are we getting it? And, and they don't know that you've been saving your profit for the building. You know, that's, that creates unnecessary worrying, mm -hmm. unnecessary. And yes, we should be a people of prayer, but there are times when you just are concerned and you're worrying and you're like, I'm praying God to help me because right. I need to know where he getting or where she's getting this money from to purchase this building. Right. So if you know that this is what you want to do, just write it down, make it plain. And we felt this was important to speak about in the beginning because there, the first month of the year, everyone, I will say from the end of 
the prior year, the previous mm-hmm. year, to the to the first month, to halfway through the first month of the year. Everyone is thinking about what they're about to do, trying to do this, trying to do that. Maybe things will last longer or be more successful if your spouse is in it with you. Right. Maybe they won't die. Maybe they won't, you know. I heard somebody was on the radio the other day, and he said that he doesn't say things because... Basically, he was saying he doesn't. He's not going to be held accountable. He doesn't say things. He just does it. So if he comes, so say if he says he's going to lose ten pounds, he just goes for it. But if he doesn't, then nobody won't know right. that. But I don't agree with that. Right. The Bible says, "Make it plain. Write it down." Yep. I agree with making it plain, writing it down, letting your spouse be able to read it, or whoever is in business partnership with you, or assisting you but right now we're talking about spouses that they can help you to create what you envision yep. that they can bring help you bring it to life or even or either understand what is going on when you're up you know a business is not like a nine to five right depending on what kind of business you have you know um a business is like you work until you stop until you finish exactly. <laughs> until you made what you need to make for that day so you some of y'all may have a goal of i need to make two thousand dollars a day depending on what your product is or depending on what your business is you know and so you're not gonna rest until you make that if it's 11 o'clock at night your spouse needs to understand that right and your your household needs to be able to function with that going on for however long it's going to go on you know you may not you may say okay for two years it may not take two years to get to where you want to be but you're given the timeline um of whatever it is so i think that it's important that the vision be shared yeah and we have a lot of visions in january okay a lot of visions everybody got a vision yeah. you know everybody's making all these memes and posts about get out the gym you know all of this stuff everybody has a vision but in the end result you want your vision to come to fruition you want to see that thing that you vision um you want to if people that do vision boards we don't do do this stuff to and maybe that's what we need to do as couples um i know somebody a friend of ours is about to do a um, vision board party um, virtual on the 18th but i think maybe that's what we need to do you need to sit down in your house with your spouse and this is what i want this is what i want from you know and put on your vision board that way y'all can see it every day yep y'all can see like okay we didn't get here and then when you're writing you write down the plan what it's going to take and and the process to get there right so i think that the vision is important to be shared you know, for us, we share it with our children. Now, we may not share every specific, you know, because then, you know, then William got to ask 25 questions. <laughs> Why you got to do it like that? What you doing there? What's the, you know, and so, which is good because if he grows up and he stays like that, he'll be very successful. I, I pray. But we might not share everything, but they know, okay, this is what's happening. Like when we started to do Couples Corner, they understand now that this time on Mondays is this, you know? Right. Um, and we plan to do this for a long time, as long as God allows us or tells us, yes, Amen. do it. Amen. So it was just like, we just like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so it's just like, you have to let, you know, your family know. You have to let your spouse know. And I want y'all to really think. And again, I said, please call in. Please call in or type if you're with us on Facebook. Let us know. If you already had your business going um, and then you met your spouse, and how did you make your relationship successful and keep your business successful? Right. And even if you had challenges, tell us the challenges. There are people that need to know this. Um, And if you were in a marriage or a relationship and then you started your business, how did you create that and allow it to be successful that your marriage is still successful and that your business can grow um you can call in and let us know that we just want to dialogue um tonight it's just not team bevins talking we want to talk with you we want to help people and um your ideas your comments your questions even help so many people you would be surprised so if you want to call in you can call in at 1-855-493-6499 and um you can type your comments if you're with us on social media because i know that some few a few of you have businesses more than a few of you have businesses and how are they some of y'all don't work 
and have a business and some of you have a business and still work so i really need to know like what what are you doing to continue to make that successful and what has your challenges been um when it comes to being in a marriage um or even if you're um engaged my favorite people y'all still my favorite people in 2020 engaged people (laughs) y'all my favorite people because y'all have a chance to switch it up change it get it right decide yes no you know so um let me know let us know talk to us tonight please um so we can help somebody um and you made a you made a great point about you know people understanding the importance and the value of communicating you know communicating what's going on because if they don't communicate that then how will how will their spouse be able to effectively help you know yeah. and be a part of the equation because at the end of the day here's what um causes a lot of of, of <laughs> failure in some of those areas the fact that um while you are in your mind you got everything planned out and you know what needs to happen and how things need to be there's a great chance that there's some things that you're missing and that you're not considering that your mate would think about um and so when you when you have those kinds of situations it it puts you in a different it puts you in a different place because in if you are trying to establish and build and run you know a business you may not be thinking about marriage because you're only focused on the business mm-hmm. and while you're so focused on the vision and what you're trying to do with the business that you have a suffering wife or suffering husband who is feeling neglected because all of your energy all of your efforts are going into a business that they are not part that they're not a part of and so a lot of times many people feel cheated on by their spouse's business yeah um, and so that has brought a lot of issue with people. And it's like, you know, your your business has become another man or another woman to your mate. And that's not healthy. That's not healthy. So, you know, you want to be able to um, effectively communicate so that you guys are on the same page and there's no uh, there's nothing missing that would, you know, kind of damage what you guys are building and what you're striving to um, produce. You know what I mean? So it's like, go ahead. It's kind of, it's just like your job. So, you know, if your job, you know, my job, let's talk about my job. Okay. It requires me to be in the community. Okay. So when I get the, when I got the job, I told Marcus, you know, this is where I'm going to be. These are, the, this is the, my area. So he's not just driving one day on lunch or going somewhere and it's like, what you doing here? <laughs> you know, you. I tell him, these are my hours. This is what I do. You know, right. I got a real slick job. I love my job. So, um, <laughs> so it's, a, it's work. It's work, though, but yeah. it's cool. Um, so, you know, this is where I'm going to be. These are my hours. Whatever. You explain that if you have a nine to five because you know this is what these people expect of you. So for your business that you're building what do you expect of yourself to create it to be something that can have longevity and be um successful and bring abundance into your home you would want to explain that as well okay this is the business because y'all we all yes we're married to each other or we're dating each other or we're um engaged to each other but we don't always understand what's not explained Good. So you can say you have this type of business. Sounds good. Seems like you would get it. You, but from the outside, it looks one way. But from the ins and outs, it's another way. Right. You know, I, and I can give an example of, you know, when um, when Marcus worked for the church, for our church, I, I kind of was like, what y'all doing? The business side of the church is a whole different side. Then not that they didn't still do ministry, but there's a business side. So that's why all these churches have office hours because they still have to run. It, it, it's a business. Right. right. So things still have to run. Things have to be the code. Things have to, you know, different things yeah. go on during the week. And especially if you're an outreach ministry, like yeah, different cool. things happen. And so at first I was kind of like, what are y'all doing? I mean, we do this <laughs> on Sunday and Wednesday, don't we? 
but and people think people think like oh just because i said it you get it no it has to be explained so you can say i have a tire business but what does that entail for you and or for this family right you need to explain that this that entails that means that i'm gonna be from 6 a.m to 10 p.m i'm gonna be at the garage you know whatever it is you can come see me at the garage you can come past there whatever you want but this is what i'm gonna do then on tuesdays i gotta go get the tires like you that there is a lot that goes into a business that your spouse needs to understand so even um i i'm a nurse for some assisted living sometimes so even in that being my own little hustle I'm a hustler, baby. So even my own little hustle that I do, because I hustles because nobody want to be without. So you can, um, I, he has to know, you know, and, and what I need. Like, okay, I have to go to the person's house. I have to see, you know, I have to, certain things I need to do. Then after a while, I need to be going there every 45 days, maybe more, blah, blah, blah. Like I need to lay it out for him so he knows like, oh, you don't just go when they call you. No, and any nurse out there who's a nurse of an assisted living and you just go when they call you check it because you want to have a license <laughs> you want to have a license right. Right. and i would advise you to show up so you know he, i had to explain that you know like this is what this is what happens and then he went on a a visit with me one time mm -hmm. because sometimes if i don't think i'm not sure or i don't know you and you call me like i had this sister living called 579 and it don't seem right i'm going to take somebody with me and i will let you know i'm bringing my husband i'm bringing such and such with me so then when i got there he saw like oh no you really like it's rules to this thing like you know you don't just show up and say yeah i'll be the nurse of your sister living never you know, I show up and ask questions and want to see the individuals and do, you know, different things like that to find out how well they're doing because my license is on the line here. But I have to let him see that so then he can know, like, okay, you went there and it took you two hours in their house. Why? So, you know, yeah. that's just the things you have to explain. And we have a comment. What should oh. a wife do? <laughs> <laughs> what should a wife do when the husband work full time and have several side gigs but don't want the wife to work don't work collect the checks and um <laughs> <laughs> Collect them checks, manage that money, and be like, yep, you need to add an extra hour this week because I want to get some clothes. No. Um So now we've been down we've been down this road yes. before. Um and so what what happens with that you know, I can only speak from my perspective. I, you know, I can't necessarily say that this is, you know, everyone's perspective. The reason that I didn't want my wife to work was not because, um, you know, I didn't want her to, to be able to make some money or do none of that. But it was because the time that I had to be away working, working full time and working the business on the side, it left me with very little time. And sometimes my time would fluctuate. Sometimes I would have time during the day but not have any available time at night or I would have available time at night, but none during the day or, you know, it, it could fluctuate depending on what was needed at the time. So if she wasn't working, it allowed me to make sure that when I had free time, she would be able to have free time and we could still date. We could hang out. It would, you know, it wouldn't be a total loss because we still had children. So if I was going to be working during the day, and then I was looking at the big picture, too, that if she's at work all day, I'm at work all day. And then when the kids come home from school, I'm going to work again. And now she's home every day with children. And of course, during this time, you know, some of them were smaller, all of that. So it's like, you know, OK, so now I got to work a full time job, come home and be a single parent while you you know, what I mean, sure, you're gone. And then and in everybody's mind, I'm working. I'm, I'm making money. But sometimes we don't consider without that conversation, we don't know what's more important. Is the money more important than your presence? Because mm -hmm. in some cases, I don't really care about you making the money that you're going to make while you're out here working. I would rather you be here so that our family can be a family. Amen. You know, so it, it's different perspectives that different people have. 
um, with why they don't want a person to work. But that's a conversation that you need to have. Now, it changed. Um, it changed and it changed for us because she started wanting more than what I was able to provide with the two, you know, incomes that I that I had. So it was basically going to be, OK, this is what I can bring with these two sources of income. And if you want more than what this can bring, then you're going to have to work part time so that you can get the things that you want. And so when she did start working, it wasn't full time. It was part time. But her part time work, her part time work money was specified. So that was for us to go on vacations. That was for, you know, you to buy this or if you wanted to do that or different things. So it became money that was specified, you know, what I mean, but it, it helped us to establish how we were going to make business and marriage work without either one of them suffering. And that took communication and it took some figuring out. And it wasn't like, a, oh, just do this and it works. No, you and because every relationship is different and the dynamic in the relationship can be different. So we had to do it based off of what was going to work best for us. Because outside of me working a full time job and having a business, I still was in ministry. So that, too, you know, all played a part. So it was like, you know, very time consuming. But at the same token. Without me being able to to have her free, you know, because it makes it a lot easier for her to be up late if she don't have to get up super early. But if she got to be if she got to be up at five or she got to be up at six to get ready to go to work, then if I'm not coming home to 11, then she ain't gonna be trying to be home and be up for another hour, two hours so we can spend some quality time. No, I need to go to sleep because I got things to do. You miss that because you want to be gone. You know, so those were the angles and that was the benefits for for us to do that. You know, what I mean, but then it kind of, you know, you, you got to know what works for your situation. So so like you said, I, I believe that it's a conversation um, that has to be had. But it's also thinking where these gigs when we were dating, was he doing these gigs? Um, I'm not asking anybody to answer the question, but I'm just saying, this is thinking, was he doing these gigs? So, for instance, when I married Marcus, he was doing music. So, I can't just think, oh, music about to go out the window because I need two hours. Not going to happen because that's what he loved. And so, doing the gigs, um, I mean, doing the music, um, was something he had to realize how much time it was taking but that still didn't mean that i didn't have the conversation right like okay now you're gonna do this now you're gonna do that and I, you know okay and what are we gonna do so still having a conversation now the conversation isn't easy because this is what they love right you know and they love to be like okay I, this is what i gave you know i brought this and i gave and this is i'm paying bills and, and i hope paying bills and you know you got this we don't need anything but a lot to a lot of us and especially as we get older time means more than anything right. so that is a conversation that we have to have and it's not just husband i mean wives making husbands understand but some husbands have to make wives understand because sometimes we can get out here and be doing all these things and it's really not beneficial to our relationship um and that maybe the timing can change. Right. You know, um, I know I had a couple that was like, they just got married and he was working like seven days a week. And I was like, maybe he can just give a day. You know, maybe he can just get one day to just be off. Not saying you got to have a regular five day week like we do, but just one day to just have a family time. Right. Um, you know, maybe get off early some days, some compromise first and then, you know, but the conversation has to be, you know, you know how you can get to your spouse or talk to your spouse because like I said, we can't tell anybody exactly what to say, but you know how to communicate with your spouse. So that conversation I believe is very important. And it's also not necessarily, like you said, it's not always an easy conversation to have. No. And it's not easy to have, nor is it always easy to hear. So at the same token, you know, um, it's not easy to say that 
I know that you are working. I know you you got this business, or I know you got this side hustle. Or I know you got that, but like, I know that that business needs their CEO. That that business needs its president. That mm-hmm. business needs that, but that husband still needs a wife. And that wife still needs a husband. So let's not forget that there's also other responsibilities that you have and that that business is not your only one. You know, and so that it's not an easy conversation to always have, but it's also not an easy one to hear when you're the one thinking that what you're doing is right. Because you can do a good thing and it still be wrong. You know, so sometimes sometimes we think that well, what I'm doing is is good. What I'm doing is, you know, um, is 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 the right thing to do. But you can do the right thing at the wrong time, and it can become wrong. So it's it's really about your situation. It's about you know knowing and understanding what you have to do. Just like we talked about the music piece, you know, it's easy from the outside looking in to say, okay, it's a four hour event. So the event is from seven to oh, eleven, my goodness. and you like, okay. Cool. So you gonna be you gonna leave oh, at six thirty, and you are gonna be back at eleven thirty. You know. So until you until you get to experience, you know, loading time and oh, you know goodness. sound check and sound check. all of these things. You know, then you got to break down and you Why got the sound all check have to be things, at twelve you know. noon for a six o'clock event. <laughs> but it's you know uh, that's the that's the nature of that's the nature of that of that business. You know what I mean? So it's like once you kind of experience it and you see that this is what it takes or this is what it entails. So now you're talking about an event that's from seven to eleven, but you're talking about you got to leave at ten thirty. For a seven o'clock event, and it's over at eleven. Yeah, it's over at eleven, but you ain't coming back till one. Like this, this whole situation. You know what I mean? Something, something ain't right. You know what I mean? You, you ain't gonna tell me that you need to leave in the morning, and you won't come back in the morning for a four-hour event. No, something ain't right. Something ain't right. But once you go and you experience it and you see that this is what it takes, this is the normal. This is you know. Then it's just like, man, I didn't know that. It, it it required all of this. You know what I mean? And so now it gives you a better mm-hmm. understanding when you're able to see it, when you're able to know, you know, what it actually mm-hmm. takes to do it. it you can gain a, a different appreciation. Yeah, so that's one of the things, you know, like one of the things I had to see because I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> the only time that was acceptable was when y'all did something, I think, for like the president or something, Barack Obama. Yeah. Um, president. <laughs> um, so, like, I don't know if you know like that's acceptable because i know you need to be there early you need to you know everybody gotta get checked and all of that but all this other stuff it doesn't seem logical but that's what i'm saying like anybody out there that's a musician's wife talk to me (laughs) i can help you i can help you i can save you some fussing crying all of that so but you know it just doesn't seem right it's like you know like when i first started dating marcus we had he had like it was a holiday, and he's like, we're going to this church to hear somebody, probably Ty Tribbett, because he always came here. And I'm like, there's no way. You just got home at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> from a church. <laughs> like, But it was normal for this church to have these concerts <laughs> on and at, yeah. you know, in the, at night. I ain't going to name the church. And, we'll right. <laughs> and so it's like, Won't are you serious? Yeah. So then I went to one. And we was dating. So when I got home, my mother was like, are you serious? <laughs> you you was not at no church. Right. I was like, ma, seriously. We was at church. <laughs> like to the last beat of the drum. <laughs> so this is like, this can go in. Y'all can take, we're talking about this, musicians, but you can take that in anything, you know. Right. right. I can, you know, I can think that. I'm running in to check a client and their blood pressure high. Exactly. So now we all messed up. The kids sitting in the car, Marcus in the car, like we're not going nowhere because yeah. I need to take care of this person. Can't leave. My job is to keep you alive and keep you safe. So I need to take care of them. But if you don't understand, like, okay, you say you was coming here, check on them, whatever. <laughs> blood pressure high. We got to stay. It's just, 
it's like this even with me like the children start knowing what what type of nurse i am right so if we're driving down the street and somebody had an accident or they see an accident and you know number two is famous for them it's like oh god please please let somebody be here because we're going to be sitting in a car somewhere on somebody's side of the road because my mother's going to get out and see if she can help them but i would want somebody to help me y'all if i was in an accident banged up or something like that and then i heard right. the police don't come all the time anymore and then how long it's gonna take for the ambulance to get there we don't know so i so that's for two reasons not just because i'm a nurse but I also would want help if it was me so they're like oh gosh please don't let please let the ambulance be here when we get up here because <laughs> We're going to be on the side of the road. But they start to understand why now, you know. So you have to understand it. If the outside looks something, I'm telling you, totally different. But when you start explaining it to your spouse, then they their eyes become open. Or when they go with you one time. Or when they show up at your office. Or something like that, you know. Then they understand, you know. Right. That that's just like if you're a car, you sell cars. I don't think you can just show up at the auction, grab a car, and you leaving in an hour. I, I don't think that <laughs> happens that way. Right. You might be at the auction for some hours, wow. but they might not understand that. Like you need to make sure this car you taking it, and you're gonna be able to sell it. Right. You know. So. I just uh, or your the buyer has asked you for a specific car, and you're in there. You know, looking for a specific car for them, mm-hmm. and your spouse is like, "What's going on here? It's cars. Grab a car. You know, pay for it and let's go." I don't think that I've never been to an auction, but I just don't think that's how the auction works. <laughs> so, if it's your business, you need to be explaining th- that, and whatever vision you have for it, you need to be explaining it. And even you know, to that extent, like I said, if it's your job, you need to be explaining. This is what my job requires of me. Right. So can you have like that lonely thing? That's so real. Mm-hmm. That is real because there were plenty of times, even though I had children, I was lonely. Like, okay, I can't talk to them because they don't really talk that well. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know, I had a couple, a few good friends, you know, I could talk to. After a while, they get upset. Then I got one friend. She just want me to text, but I'm just like, <laughs> I want to talk. I right. want to talk. And like, you, And you had a flip phone. So, right. You had to hit, right. You had to hit so three times. Text back then. So, it's like when I get around people or I want to, you know, it's like you want to talk or you just like, all right, when you coming home again, when you say like, okay, the show was over at such and such time. Right. Are y'all on your way yet? Like, what are y'all doing? Nobody. We don't have time to talk. Break down and let's go. <laughs> you know, but you, it's unfair because they're in their element, you know, and not that they can't, they don't need to think about you, but you just need to understand it a little better. And there are some of us who will understand it and still won't like it. Listen, don't think that I'm, you know, some people have had the conversation. Some people are like, yeah, but I'm not with it, you know. And then I would ask you, were they doing this prior to the marriage? Right. Because if they were, if I wasn't with being, Marcus being a musician, then I shouldn't have married him. You know, if he wasn't with me helping people, because I was always helping people even before I came a nurse, then he shouldn't have married me. Because right. he knows I'm a go. If my friend call and say, you know, the call is a little different now. It's not right. like, yeah, we need to meet. Hey, come on, let's go because we got to, you know. Yeah, I got to have So, mail. you know, it's the call is a little different now. But at the same time, he knows that I'm going to be there. If it's my friend, if it's my family member, I'm going to be there. So, you know, what does he do? So, <laughs> there's been a lot of times he's like, all right, I'm going with you. Wait a minute. Let me get myself together. You know, middle of the night, we both out here. So, that's just the thing. You need to be able to explain it. But there are a lot of us that or a lot of you all that have explained have it explained and you still don't agree with it then you have to come to some type of compromise right you know of okay i really don't like this business i really don't like xyz oh i really didn't understand it this is all it took you know but i'm here we're here now so we have to compromise so that every day won't be hard or every weekend whenever they do gigs or whatever or every evening every thursday and friday evening won't be hard it has to come to some type of you know compromise so yeah and that's you know the when you when you grow to that because that's not just something that just magically happens that's something that comes with maturity it comes with understanding and that maturity is on both ends the the person who you know for lack of a better term is suffering or going without because of the other person who's trying to build the business they have to be mature enough to know 
that I have to approach this because I'm also dealing with their heart. Because if this is your vision, this is something that's attached to your heart. So me coming in to tell you that there's something wrong with your heart isn't an easy conversation. Right, that's good. You know, for me to come in and say that there's something wrong with your love and your passion, you know, that you have isn't an easy conversation. And I have to walk, you know, gently and I need to do it tactfully because if not, you will excommunicate that person from that portion of your life. And they won't have any access to to your business dealings because you feel like they are against you because of the way that they approached what they had to say instead of you being mature enough to see that this is a cry for help Mm -hmm. you know this is this is them sharing their heart and and me being so passionate about what i want to a degree in a selfish manner although my end goal is for us as a unit to win my my method of getting there is selfish so even though my goal is for it to be something that we all benefit from if my method to get there is selfish then i'm doing harm along the way so when we do make it you still won't celebrate it because you'll end up hating something that you are actually being blessed by or benefiting from because the journey and the process to get there did so much damage that it's not a celebration for you yeah, and and I also want to bring up a point, but we'll probably talk about this later in the month. Um, um, because if you missed in the beginning, we're the topics that we talk about will be the month's topic. Um, so also the if you do show up or wherever you are, um, this is something that needs to be explained too. If the people that patronize the business, mm-hmm. okay, because I'm a massage therapist, I don't just massage women, right. So the people that patronize the business, your spouse has to understand it can't and spouses. We can't just show up and, you know, I didn't understand why people crowded around the musician and all of this. I just really didn't like it. It just, it was never cool for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, find somebody else. But I understand now. I understand that a lot of musicians and I don't, don't take no offense to anybody if this was you, but a lot of musicians, um, a lot of singers, a lot of people, they have groupies. And people don't really realize they're groupies. I mean, they have fans. They have mm-hmm. they have people that follow them around to every single thing they do, whether it's church or whether it's the other secular. Well, no matter what it is, there are people, and they may not even mean any harm. They just love the art, you right. know. And they mean they may mean harm, but some of them just love the art. They just love this this artist. It's just like if we follow whoever if if i was following i talk about ty tripper let's say if so if ty tripper everywhere he was i was you know and his wife doesn't understand she might be like now nah, i've seen this lady uh-huh. at the last six of them because that would be me i'd be like she she been here she consistent at the last like right. she she been in three cities right two states like <laughs> what's going on so you need to know who what the um the people that patronize the business so if your husband sells hair I don't know if that's a legit business, but if he sells hair, I do know some men that sell hair, though. I don't know if that's legit business. But if he sells hair, one thing doesn't make him gay. And two things, he going to have women buying the hair. Right. Like, I, that's just that's just reality. Right. Okay? So we need to also not let that be a hindrance to a business growing because we don't understand the dynamics of the people that it serves. Right. And the spouse can help with that, you know, like, uh, you know, Marcus works close with me with massage. So he knows, OK, males are going to come in here. They're going to be saying, don't look crazy when you see somebody come in here. That's a male. Right. Because they need massages, too. He gets massages, right. you know, so and don't intimidate them. Right. Do your job. He has a job to do. He does that. And then I do my job. I'm the massage therapist. So I do that. So you you will mess up a business if you don't understand the ins and outs, and especially if you don't understand who is being served. That and and you start thinking, you know, like, well, wait a minute, why is she been here? Because she's buying the hair. Right. She the hairstylist <laughs> down the street. She buying the hair. Why is she texting him? Because she need that hair. Somebody need somebody need a weave. You right. know. So uh, and, you know. And too, like you said though, but it it. it <clears throat> There's a flip side to that because although the business, 
might be a great idea, you have to consider the character yes. of the person. Yeah. So, you know, the character of the person, if that person is not healthy for that portion of the business, that's then that's something that you got to consider because although the business could be lucrative, the the character of the person doing business could be damaging. That's true. We have a comment that says you have to trust your spouse and, and boundaries. Yes, that's true. And spouses, if you've messed up before, don't be walking around like, oh, I need to tell you, you know, this is my business. No, you're accountable to make your spouse feel comfortable. Right. Okay. Right. So you're accountable to make your spouse feel comfortable. So it's not that you can't run your business, but now you got some extra things you might have to do. Some extra steps. You know, <laughs> you got some extra steps because you messed up. So, you know, because the, the, the reality is everybody out here has not been in a, just a faithful relationship. Right. So one, if you messed up and your spouse forgave you and stayed with you, you are obligated to make them feel comfortable, especially if they, they weren't like, oh, no, you don't sell hair no more. Right. And see this. Let me give you an example, because like sometimes people don't see patterns and, and because they don't see their own pattern. They don't recognize that because they have a pattern they've created damage so the same scenario that you gave about the guy that has the hair business you know okay that's his business and and yes there are going to be women that are buying from you and that's fine but if you don't treat all your customers the same absolutely then that's different you see what i'm absolutely. saying you know you 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 but treat the customer that spend more money you may treat her right <laughs> you know what <laughs> i mean but, but if you're not you be like, oh, if I you're not consistent morning, yeah if you if you're like, not consistent <laughs> with your customer service with everybody you know or or you know you you decide okay i'm gonna be a little generous because like you said they've been consistent i'm gonna slide them a little you know a little bundle yeah. On you know that I ain't gonna charge them for or whatever, that, but you gotta pay attention to you gotta pay attention to your do. cycle, mm-hmm. and you gotta you gotta realize that if you only give free bundles to pretty girls, yeah. you ain't gave no ugly girl no free bundle. Oh my gosh, not ugly girl. You see what I'm saying? Like these are things that you have to be honest with, and so something something although you feel like. You know, well, well this is my business, no and I'm big, exactly right. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> you got to pay attention to your choices and how how it will look to the other person. So, if I'm on the outside looking in, you know, if that woman is on the outside looking in, and she's like, "I understand that you do this business, and I understand that you could be a, a giving person, and you chose to give, but did you recognize that you ain't gave nobody ugly nothing? Yeah. The only people you give are the people that you're attracted to. Yeah." Because I know your type. You know what I'm saying? So, like, different things like that can create, you know, issues within within the marriage because you're trying to do business. So, all of that kind of works hand in hand together. And we're still, you know, really just talking about you having a vision mm-hmm. for success. Mm-hmm. There's still, you Don't know, anymore. there's still the plan. There's still the work that has to be done. There's still the process yep. in order for you to get to success. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we think the idea is going to be immediate success. And that's not the case, you know. And so in order for you to actually get to the place of success, it's going to require you to make sure that you get there together because if not you can get to the destination of success and be there by yourself yeah so um i was gonna say something i wrote it down um and your spouse is also your voice of reason right so we'll talk about that more later too they're also your voice of reason um but you know my final word would be that you need to um so that and we're going to talk a little bit more about the conference too that you need to communicate have conversations and explain the vision right that's important and you know along with that you have to um you have to be sure that what you're doing is something that's going to be a good fit for your future not just for your pocket so right, that's good. you know business can be lucrative but if the business that you want to be lucrative is not going to be beneficial to your relationship then you know you got to count the cost and figure out is this is this extra money worth the turmoil that it can do to my relationship because at the end of the day your your marriage is supposed to be forever till death do you part and so we want to make sure that that happens this is the couple's corner (laughs) and we're leaving now (laughs) 
Thank you for tuning in to the Couples Corner with Tim Bevins. We're grateful that you stopped by and shared your time with us tonight. We look forward to seeing you again will be all next mom. week at 9 p.m. And feel free to share this on your page with any of your people who would benefit from this conversation. We're grateful that you shared your time with us. And now we've got to go, but we look forward to connecting with you again here on the Couples Corner with Team Bevins. <laughs> so this topic will be all month we're all leaving right. now but we just want to say this this topic will be all month um if you have topics make sure you send them in to us so that we can um talk about it um and um the conference is january 24th 25th next friday saturday you still have time to um, pay to tell a couple that you know it's a hundred dollars it's in timonium at the holiday inn um, we have a great time. You don't have to be having a hard time in your marriage to come. Just come out, enjoy some time with your spouse, get a hotel room there so that you can stay there and enjoy them and not have to go back home and worry about whatever's happening at home. So Friday from 7 p.m. Um, and then to when we stop and then saturday 9 a.m to 5 um even if you can only come to one day just let us know send us a message uh you can reach us at team you can go to team bevins.com and find out information you can um register at www.mkt.com backslash w dash marcus dash bevins you can cash at dollar sign strictly S T R I C K L Y victory. And when you cash up, if you cash up your hundred dollars, just put in the notes who you are. Cause if not, we'll think it's a gift and, um, we will love to have you please share our flyer. Um, and we will have a great time. Um, we'll be back on before the conference, but we just want you, you know, to, um, tell a friend you can still register and um, come out and enjoy some fellowship with us. All right, party people. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you next week in the Couples Corner. Peace.